<laughs> Hello there, brothers and sisters. Church of the Living God. Hello. Um, I hope you're doing well. I'm praying for a whole lot of you. A whole lot of you. Got a got something interesting to go through with you here today. This is going to be one of two videos that I'm going to be doing today. Um, they are both uh, responses answering questions that I was asked. And um, so I'm getting around to it today to do these. The past three days, today is Thursday. Um, it's 5.15 p.m. in the afternoon when I'm um, recording these. Uh, the Lord has just uh, opened up a door of opportunity around here in, uh, in my congregation, you know, my town. Um, the weather has been favorable, and I've ha I have um, the tracks from Brother Matthew Mellinson, and um, he just has opened up a door of opportunity to get out there in the congregation and to do a lot of tracting. Uh, even witnessing and even some street preaching here and there. Not where I'm standing reading the scriptures, but um, onlookers listening in, that kind of thing. But uh, it's been an amazing past couple of three days. Uh, like I said, the weather has been absolutely uh, favorable. And um, I make time to get out in the congregation and to tract. Um, I do. I, I make time for that. And uh, Monday through Wednesday has been nothing but tracting, witnessing, and um, talking with people and getting some chances to uh, street preach, in a way. And uh, glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. But today, like I said, we are going to be looking into the scriptures, answering two questions. First one here that we're going to be talking about is the Elijah question. What do you mean, Brad? Well, I have a lot of experience in witnessing onto the Jewish people. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. And one of the attacks that non-believing Jewish people, one of them, uh, this one is actually kind of common. They will point to the fact that our Lord Jesus Christ called John the Baptist Elijah. And John the Baptist said that he was not. And they call it a contradiction. That is actually common. I've run into that actually quite a few times. And uh, a brother asked me of this, and um, here is the appropriate scriptural response. Okay? So we're going to be looking in this. Got quite a few scriptures to go through today, so get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. If uh, you're new to anything uh, that the Lord does through Iason, who is chief, these are the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. If you're going to try to use something that is not the authorized version of the scriptures, in other words, a Bible, um, this isn't going to work for you. Okay? So, get your authorized version of the Scriptures, King James Scriptures, and turn in your King James Scriptures to Matthew chapter 11. Okay? Matthew chapter 11. We are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 15. Okay? And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John in prison, facing um, what he inevitably would face, Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and shew John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, 
and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the, with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft, soft clothing are in king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? What were they expecting to see? You note that right away, very quickly. Okay. Huh. What went ye out into the wilderness to see? But what went ye out for to see? But what went ye out for to see? What were they looking for? What they weren't uh, expecting. But what went ye out, uh, in verse 9, But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea. I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven, is greater than he. Kingdom of heaven again. The physical, literal kingdom on earth where Jesus Christ, God our Father, when he come back the second time with us as saints, where he will rule and reign from in Jerusalem for a thousand years here on earth. Okay? Kingdom of heaven is always a reference unto that. Okay? You got it? Let's continue. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violence take and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. Now, hinge this verse particularly. We're going to come back to it. And if ye will receive it, hinge this, if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come, Elias, Greek for Elijah. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So, we have right there, in verse 14, our Lord said, and if Ye will receive it. This is Elias, which was for to come. Hmm. Hmm. Very interesting, right? Go now to uh, Matthew chapter 17. Remember verse 14. Remember verse 14. Matthew chapter 17. We are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 13, okay? Um, incidentally, if you have a pen and paper handy, you might want to take a few notes. Just saying. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 on to verse 13. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Verse 3. You're going to have to remember the transfiguration, because we're going to come back to this as well. Okay? The transfiguration. Remember that. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Very important with what we're going to get into a little later. Then answered Peter and said, Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. 
While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face, and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them, and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lift up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, now Pay attention. Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias has come already. And they knew him not. And they knew him not. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. And they knew him not. In verse twelve, remember in uh, Matthew chapter eleven, verse fourteen. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. If ye will receive it. Verse 12 in Matthew chapter 17, But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew him not. Hmm. That's twice. Go to Mark. Go to Mark chapter 9. Go to Mark chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 13. Mark chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 13. Again, we're reading this. This is about the transfiguration again, but we're showing you, okay? Mark chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 13. <clears throat> and he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there shall that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God come with power. And kingdom of God there is referring to the spiritual kingdom. Okay? And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Elias with Moses. Hmm. And Peter answered and said, Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not what to say, for they were so afraid. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And suddenly when they had looked round about, they saw no man any more save Jesus only with themselves. And as they came down from the mountain, he charged them that they should tell no man what things they had seen till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. And they kept that saying with themselves, questioning one another, one with another, what the rising from the dead should mean. And they asked him, saying, why say the scribes that Elias must first come? And he answered and told them, Elias verily cometh first, and restoreth all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man, that he must suffer many things and be set at naught? But I say unto you, that Elias is indeed come. And they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. So we see here clearly, clearly, that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is referring to John the Baptist as, Malai as Elijah. Right? We see that, don't we? But now, go to John chapter 1. 
John chapter 1. And herein is where they will point out the contradiction. This is what I have run into myself personally. And it appears to be quite a common occurrence with those Jews who are aware of the scriptures and reject these scriptures. Because remember, a lot of the Jewish people are under this absurd belief that the Old Testament is our book, but the New Testament is for the Gentile. When this in its entirety is a Jewish book. John chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 28. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you looking at that? Art thou Elias, Elijah? And he saith, I am not. Oh, uh oh. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Oh, uh oh. Let's keep reading. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. And they which were sent, and they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. He it is, who coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Bethabara, beyond Jordan, where John was baptizing. Hmm. Hmm. So, what happens is, as I have experienced, unbelieving, Christ-rejecting Jewish people will, who are aware of these things will say, uh, Jesus said that, Eli uh, that John was Elias, Elias, Elijah. And here John's saying that he is not. You might be thinking, well, that's kind of a problem, isn't it? First, let's go to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. You need to see this with your own two eyes. Okay? Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 on to verse 5. John the Baptist himself said of himself, he said in verse 23 in John chapter 1, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 on to verse 5. <laughs> and those who are uh, Jesuitical trained textual critics, they like to say from uh, Isaiah 40 is Deutero Isaiah. That there were two people called Isaiah that wrote the same book. <laughs> You see what happens when you get messed up with that Jesuitical, yea hath God said, textual criticism, having the thinking you got to go to the Hebrew or the Greek? Which one, by the way? Yeah, okay, let's continue. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her, that her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, 
Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. This is who John the Baptist said of himself that he was. But the, but the Lord Jesus Christ said that um, said that he was Elijah. Now see, some of the reasoning when you run into this argument, uh, you might mistakenly be like, well, Jesus Christ is God the Father, our Lord. Uh, what he says is right, but so maybe John the Baptist was confused. No, 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 no. Remember what I told you to hinge? Matthew chapter 11, verse 14, go back there. Okay, Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. Okay. And if ye will receive it, if, and if ye will receive it, you know, you know what you do, remember, you know what you do with that if? Circle it, okay? And if ye will receive it, this is Elias which was for to come. Mm. And chapter 17, verses 11 through 12, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is, our, is come already, and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. So you might be thinking, okay. And then John here says, when they ask him, and they asked him in uh, John chapter 1, verse 21, and they asked him, what then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Hmm. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. Oh boy, we have a problem, right? Go to Luke. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 17. We have to read the context. Luke chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 17. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. Lowercase w. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. <clears throat> there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elzbeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elzbeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, 
his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. Yeah. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elsbeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. <clears throat> and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. <clears throat> for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. The Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that Spirit. Let's continue. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Aha! We have a clue. Don't we? Look at the verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Okay? And he shall go before him in the spirit, lowercase s, and power of Elijah, of Elias. Excuse me. It's Elijah, but Elias. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now, it says here that an angel of the Lord. Who was this angel of the Lord? You look at verse uh, 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel. So the angel of the Lord that came to Zacharias was Gabriel. Messenger. Okay. Take your pen. Verse 17, we had, we had to read that whole thing, okay? We had to read that whole, whole thing. Verse 17, And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. The spirit and power of Elijah. Okay? Turn to 2 Kings. 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 15. 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 15. Now, this is when Elijah and Elisha are walking together. Elisha is the one who came after Elijah. We know that, right? Backstory for those of you who do not know. Okay? Let's go. 9 unto verse 15 in 2 Kings. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit, lowercase s, circle thy spirit, be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, 
that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elisha that fell from him, and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, very similar to the Red Sea. And Elijah, uh, excuse me, Elisha went over. Verse 15. Don't look at me, look at the scriptures. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. So the spirit of Elijah rested on Elisha. See, the spirit of Elijah. I hope you held your place in Luke chapter 1, verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Eli Elias, excuse me, Elias. That's, it says Elias there. That's the Greek rendering. Okay, pick your pardon. Okay, but now um, turn to and uh, Brother Aaron Judge uh, pointed this one out to me. Praise the Lord! Uh, make sure you check out the videos that the Lord does through uh, our beloved Brother Aaron Judge, preacher of the Word of God. Okay, Second uh, Second Peter, chapter one. Second Peter, chapter one. Verses 20 under verse 21. Okay? 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 under verse 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And also, too, you have to remember, go to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, not Acts, Brad, pick your part. 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, Verses 31 under verse 33. Uh, you charismatics need to pay attention to this. For ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. Verse 32. And the lowercase s and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches, bodies of people, not buildings, of the saints. Note here, the spirits, or case S, of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Words to note. Prophets, prophets, and, verse 33, author. What does this mean? The spirit of the prophets is our subject to the prophets. 
Where do we read or learn of what the prophets have said? Hello? The scriptures? You have these nutty, and I'm using Church of the Living God charity when I say that, you have these nutty care Catholics with their demonic, devilish, blah, 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 blah. Um, and <laughs> we have to remember that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Where are the prophets located? Where are their writings? How do we know what the prophets said? The scriptures. Okay? You compare everything with the scriptures. How do you know that's what that's saying? Uh, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Uh, if you're supposed to be judging the prophets without the scriptures, but just going off feelings, how do you know which one is which unless you have a perfect and errant authority to judge them by? Right? Huh? You get that? Yeah? Okay. But we see, what do we see? Brethren, sisters. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. Spirit and power of Elias. Now, very quickly, go to Malachi chapter 4. Okay? When the Lord says about, uh, before we go there, uh, go back to Matthew chapter 11. Okay? Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. Matthew chapter 11, verse 14. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. They didn't believe that God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah, was standing right in front of them. And a lot of the people believed uh, what uh, John the Baptist was saying, yes, and they counted him as a prophet. But the Lord said he was Elias, right? You see that, right? And uh, Matthew chapter 17, verses 11 on to 12. Matthew chapter 17, come on. Verses 11 on to 12. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first, and restore all things. But I say unto you, that Elias has come already. And they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. And go back to John, chapter 1, verse 5. Not Acts, Brad. John, chapter 1, verse 5. Come on, fingers work with me. Oh, excuse me, verse 15. <laughs> John, chapter 1. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong notes. I'm sorry. John chapter 1, verse 21. I'm sorry about that. I was looking at the wrong notes. Sorry. John chapter 1, verse 21. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. When the Lord says that he has come, that Elias has come, okay, what he is talking about is exactly what it says here in Luke chapter 1, verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So, the spirit of Elias and the power of Elias was within John the Baptist. So when our Lord says that that John the Baptist was Elias, it's not a contradiction, uh, contradiction. Because, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. And when John says, I'm not Elias himself, he wasn't lying. He wasn't lying. Spirit and power of Elias. 
That is what our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is referring to. That John the Baptist came, right here, in the spirit and power of Elias. In the spirit and power of Elias. John the Baptist was not actually, physically, Elijah himself. No. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. The Lord Jesus Christ is not lying. He is making reference that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah of Elias. Okay? It's not a contradiction. And when John says that I'm not Elias, it's not a contradiction. Because, because, go to Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. It's not a contradiction. John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elias. Okay? And when our Lord said that, Elias has come, if ye will receive it. Because remember, the Jews require a sign. Okay? John the Baptist was not Elijah in his person, spirit, soul, and body. He came in the spirit and power of Elias. Okay? He was not Elias himself. Okay? He came in the spirit and power of. So when our Lord says, Elias has already come, he was making reference to that. Because, Malachi chapter 4, uh, we're going to read this whole chapter. I, I hope you can handle it. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts. That it shall leave neither that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Now this is, number one, in a different dispensation under the law. Okay? In the dispensation under the law, the Holy Ghost could come and go, come and go, come and go. You are not eternally secure in the dispensation under the law. Okay? Okay? It was faith and works. Okay? I got a video proving that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Okay? But, dispensationally and doctrinally, who is this written to? The Jews. Let's keep reading. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant. Note that. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Pay attention. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Yeah. Now, look at verse 5. I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Now, when our Lord, God the Father, God manifest in the flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he first appeared, he came as the Lamb. The Lamb, which taketh away the sins of the world. Okay? Okay. He came here to die on the cross, to pay for our sins. And he died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Okay? He came here to die. Alright? God shall provide himself a lamb. 
for a burnt offering. That's in Genesis chapter 22, I believe. Go find it. Okay? Isaiah 53. Okay? The Lord Jesus Christ first came as the Lamb. And he was offering the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, unto the Jewish people. They rejected it. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4. Okay? And the blood that he shed on the cross is the atonement for our sin. Okay? He bled the blood of God to pay for our sins. Got it. We, we all get that, right? Even you heretics get that. Yes? Okay? So, we know that. But when he comes back, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's going to come back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's why uh, Brother Matthew uh, Hrun, I can't do it as good as my wife. Sorry, brother. That's why um, the uh, Jerusalem flag or the flag that has the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is making a prophecy of their future, like Jesus when he comes back. So, before the great, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Um, newsflash, verse 5 is referring to the second coming. And look at verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse lest I come and smite the uh, smite the earth with a curse okay go to Matthew chapter 24 Matthew chapter 24 which is specifically talking about the time of Jacob's trouble it is not called the great tribulation okay Matthew chapter 24 is talking about the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Matthew chapter 24, for, <laughs> uh, verses 20, on to verse 22. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, nor on the Sabbath day. Question. Do we of the Church of the Living God today keep the Sabbath? No, we do not. It is not a requirement for salvation to keep the Sabbath. That was specifically for the Jews. If you want to keep the Sabbath, knock yourself out. It's not a requirement. Okay? I've addressed that in other videos before. Okay? But we're not keeping the Sabbath day today. Clue. For then shall be great tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation. Circle, okay, get your pen, get your little pen, and circle. For then shall be great tribulation. It's not a title. The time of Jacob's trouble because it is for the Jews okay but for then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be check this out and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Malachi chapter 4 verse 6. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the, ch to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Matthew chapter 24 verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. 
And the lex sake there is specifically talking about the Jews. Never mind this nutty satanic teaching of John Calvin. Okay? Never mind that stuff. That's crazy. You blow it right out of the water. Okay? Malachi chapter 4 shows us that Elijah himself is going to personally return. Okay? He's going to personally return. But now, okay, now, here's a little, we're going to do a little reading now. Okay? Let's see what Elijah did. Okay? Go to 1 Kings chapter 18. Okay? Beg your pardon, brethren, i got to get a sip of water. Be right back. Okay, sorry about that. You don't see anything when I pause it, but that's okay. We are going to be reading verses 17 on to the end of the chapter in 1 Kings chapter 18. You need to see this and we need to get this in context. Okay? Now, very quickly. There was a drought in the land. And, well, let's read. 1 Kings chapter 17 on to the end of the chapter. Yeah, we're going to read this whole thing. I hope you can handle it. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that, Eli that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Baalim. The Jews of Israel today, are steeped deep in Kabbalah, okay? Kabbalistic magic, the Kabbalah. They are rely heavily on the Talmud, okay? Just if you ever get the chance to read the book Night by Eli Wiesel, which is short for Eli or Eliezer Wiesel, uh, read the book Night. Right before the Holocaust, which was God's judgment upon his people, I have a whole a three-part video on that, um, they were doing a lot of the same thing that they're doing today, okay? Following Balim, thinking that they're following the Lord, Jesus Christ, God our Father. And they reject the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That's why we were grafted into their tree, Romans chapter 11. Okay. Uh, incidentally, I'm going to link in this video in the comment section in the uh, description box both the videos on replacement theology. Okay, just so you know. So let's continue. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. Jezebel is a type of the Catholic Church. Semiramis, you know, the Roman Catholic Mary. Let's continue. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Note this verse. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long... Halt ye between two opinions. Roll on your head, John the Baptist. Okay? When the guys came to him, what should we do? Be content with your wages. Don't exact more than you ought to. Okay? And Elisha came unto the, all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Note that. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces. And lay it on wood and put no fire on it. And I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire on it. And call ye on the name of your gods, 
Notice he said God's there, little g. Notice God's. Hmm. Like maybe a trinity? Oh, no, you don't say. Really. Isn't that interesting? Look at the Balim in verse 18. Balim. Baal, verse 21. Ah, uh, but right here. Ah, <laughs> uh, I just lost my place. Uh, verse 24. And call ye on the name of your gods. Hmm. Interesting, yes? Let's continue. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God, capital G of course, that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, <laughs> Choose you one bullock for yourselves and dress it first. For ye, for ye are many. Go ahead. Here's, here's, go do yours first. Okay. Do, your, do what you're going to do. Do what you're going to do. Go, go, go right ahead. You go, girl. Okay? <laughs> and call on the name of your gods. There it is again. Gods. Plural. Little g. Mm. But put no fire on her. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon. Note the singular reference there. Baal. And look again, God's 25, God's 24. Hmm. Incidentally, if you knew to anything here, um, there's a playlist of that's pretty much attacks the Trinity. Go ahead and check it out. Make sure you sit through the very first video that uh, Brother Aaron Judge, a preacher of the Word, did. Very uh, wonderful. Wonderful. Let's continue, okay? Let's reread that again. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leapt upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Elijah mocked the false prophets. And said, Hey, cry aloud, for he is a God. Singular reference there. Notice that? He is a God. Look at verse 25 and 24 again. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or, per, or peradventure he, he sleepeth and must be awake. Sarcasm? Mocking? Oh, there's no instruction in righteousness for us today when... Uh, False, with dealing with false prophets now. That, that's, that's just a, a nice little story, right? Let's continue. Note this. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after the manner with knives and lancets till the blood gushed out upon them. Now, you see here where in verse 26 where they leapt Upon the, wall, uh, upon the altar which was made, doing physical things. Um, I've seen the Catholic nonsense of people with the Kundalini thing going through their spine and crawling around on all fours, talking and, and, that blah, 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 and acting like dogs and barking. And it came to pass... When midday was passed, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. 
I personally believe, verse 29, and they prophesied, I personally believe what these false prophets were doing. I personally believe this, and I am up to discussion with the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, about this. I personally believe that these prophets were jumping on there, were doing just that. The blah, 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 nonsensical gibberish. I truly believe that. Let's continue. Oh, and very quickly before we continue to verse 30. There was neither voice nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elisha said unto all the people, Can you picture this? Come, come near to unto me. Come in. Come on. Come in. Never, never mind these twits. Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elisha took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water and pour it on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Get it wet. Douse it. Okay? And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran about, and the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. Making sure that it was drenched with water. Think he was trying to prove a point here? Let's continue. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. I did an old video of why was Jesus baptized, okay? Um, it was an, a public identification that, hey, there he is. There's the Messiah. There's God our Father, Lord Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh. He's right there, okay? If I can find that on my channel, I'll, I'll link it um, in the description box. But note this, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. Think about that with John the Baptist. Baptized the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And the Spirit came down like as a dove. Like as a dove. Okay? Came down and identified God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. God manifest in the flesh. There he is, the Messiah. That's why Jesus was baptized. I may, I may, like I said, I may link that in the description box. But with thinking along the lines with John the Baptist, you get my point? The spirit and power of Elijah, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. Hello? Hello? You get it? Let's continue. And that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know, circle no, Cir circle it. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell. The fire of the Lord fell. And remember also that Elijah called fire down from heaven to burn up the captains with their fifties. That's going to come into play here in a little bit. Okay. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. 
And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. And Elisha said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. Sometimes you have to keep looking. Sometimes you have to go back at it. Sometimes. Let's continue. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. Now remember, there had been a drought for three years. Okay? And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Okay? Now, so we see that what Elijah did brought the people back unto the Lord. And when you go back to Malachi, okay, Go back on to Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dread, dread, dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Now, remember I told you about to remember the transfiguration? Go back to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 3. Matthew chapter 17, verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Hmm. Hmm. Go to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. Verses 3 on to verse 12. Revelation chapter 11, verses 3 on to verse 12. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before standing before the God of all the earth. Now look at this. Verse 5. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to Turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. 
And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them and kill them. The beast, not the Jews. The beast will kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You can figure that one out for yourself. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Very quickly. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. How is everybody going to see this? WWW the World Wide Web. Hello. 5G, anybody? How is everybody going to see this? If, it was, if it's not by television or internet. Yeah, roll that around in your head for a little bit. Okay, let's continue. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, as if it were this satanic holiday uh, called Christ Mass. Okay? Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Tormented them that dwell on the earth. And after three days and a half, the Spirit of Life, capital S, capital S, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. The two witnesses. Who are these two witnesses? Remember what we saw in the book of Malachi? I will send Elijah. Two witnesses are Moses and Elijah. Some people like to bring into the equation that it's Enoch and Elijah. The fact that it's Elijah, nobody really disputes. It's usually Moses that they dispute. They say Enoch because Enoch was taken, right? He didn't see death. Um, no. Uh, even when you read that entertaining book of Enoch, which is not scripture, which contradicts with the canon of the Old Testament, thank you very little. Okay, uh, the book of Enoch is not uh, the book of Enoch is not scripture. It contradicts with the canon of the Old Testament. Okay, okay, it's entertainment. But people like to say it's Elijah. Not uh, that it's uh, Enoch instead of Moses. That it's Enoch and Elijah because they neither one of them saw death. Moses died. Uh, look at verse 6. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of the prophecy. Hold your place here. Okay. 1 Kings chapter 7. Uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. One verse. One verse. And Elijah the Tishbait, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Okay? And also on that, James, James chapter 5, okay, now and, uh, most of you of the Church of the Living God are getting this already, but this is primarily has to do with the what? 
the Jews. The Jews. The book of James. Who is the book of James written to? And what dispensation is it for? Mm -hmm. Time of the uh, time of the Gentiles, this dispensation? No. James chapter one. Verse one. In James chapter one, verse one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. The Jews. Now there's a lot of instruction and in righteousness for us within the book of James for today. Doctrinally, that's a different story, especially James chapter 2. Okay, but we're not going to get into that. We're going to look at James chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 19. Elias, uh, James chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 18, excuse me. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. So, when you go back to uh, Revelation chapter 11, uh, verse 6, it's... Hello, it's obviously Elijah. Okay? And have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, I've read the book of Enoch. That never happened in the book of Enoch. That's not scripture, that's entertainment. Okay? And I'll be dealing with that in the next video. But... Go to Exodus chapter 7. Exodus chapter 7 in the Torah. Exodus chapter 7. Come well, on, fingers work with me. Exodus chapter 7, verses 19 on to verse 20. Exodus chapter 7, verses 19 on to verse 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Take thy rod, and stretch out thine hand upon the waters of Egypt, upon their streams, upon their rivers, and upon their ponds, and upon all their pools of water, that they may become blood, and that there may be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, both in vessels of wood and in vessels of stone. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. And he lifted up the rod and smote the waters that were in the river, in the sight of Pharaoh and in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. Revelation chapter 11, verse 6. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, Elijah, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Do we need to go through all the plagues of Egypt? No. The two witnesses are Elijah and Moses. So, but right here we see these two witnesses. Revelation chapter 11, the two witnesses, is when Elijah will return. Physically. Elijah is coming back physically. Moses is going to come back physically. Okay? These are Moses and Elijah. Okay? So, when in Malachi, go there again, okay? Malachi, not Micah, close. Started with an N. <laughs> Malachi chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And when you uh, look in Revelation chapter 11, 
before the great and before, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, the second coming, hello. Okay? Do we get that? Yes. Yes. Yes, we do. And also, go to Zechariah now. Go to Zechariah chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 14. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 11 on to verse 14. Now, it says here in verse 3, in uh, Revelation chapter 11, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Okay, you see that? Zechariah chapter 4, verses 11, on to verse 14. Then answered I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered him again, and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me, and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand before the Lord of the whole earth, Elijah and Moses. See, because, because, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. Verses 18 on to verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the, of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. To save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. You you did read with me First uh, Kings eighteen seventeen through forty six, right? Uh, signs and wonders in Egypt. For the Jews require a sign, the speaking in tongues of known languages. Okay? For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And hello, Greeks are what? Gentiles. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks, foolishness. But unto them which are called, that's not the Calvin, elect and non-elect. You, you are of the called, whence you are saved. Okay? It's none of this nutty, insane, these guys are elect going to heaven, these guys are elect going to hell. That's heresy. Okay? You are elect, you are called, once you are saved. Get it? Let's continue. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Okay? Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, 
And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Okay? You see that? And also we have to remember Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Uh, verse 16 under verse 17. Romans chapter 1, verses 16 under verse 17. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile. Okay. The spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, had to first be offered on to the Jewish people. They officially rejected it in Acts chapter 7. Then you see that Philip, an Ethiopian eunuch, the Ethiopian eunuch, okay, in Acts chapter 8. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay? And question, what is faith? Remember, remember in, um, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, for the Jews require a sign of and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Oh, you, yeah, you got to go there. You got to go there. Come on. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Come on, work with me. Fingers. Work with me. Come on. Hebrews 11, verse 1. What is faith? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And Hebrews is specifically written for the Jewish people in the time of Jacob's trouble. When it's going to be faith and works. Can't take the mark of the beast or you're guaranteed to go to hell. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? Now, go to Rome, go back to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Verses 14 on to verse 17. Now, verse 14 is specifically talking about those who preach the word. Okay? That's what it's talking about. We're talking about those who are preachers, who are sent to preach, who are sent. Shh. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And these easy believism, cheap grace or heretics like to run with that, but they it's like, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? You know, called of God. As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that, that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith coming by, cometh by hearing, and hearing by the lowercase w, the lowercase w, word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scripture, the true scriptures. Um, Romans chapter 10, 14 on verse 17 is clearly talking about those who preach. Uh, I remember the, uh, the heretics really like to go with that. It's like, it says believe, it says believe. It's like, uh, genius, why don't you just keep reading? 
Anyway, go to Galatians chapter 3. Okay? Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 13. For as many as are the works of the law, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is, cursed is every one that continueth not in all things, which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on the tree, on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit, capital S, through faith. You can balance that off of uh, Romans chapter one, uh, verse seventeen. Okay, and of course, well, I think you get the point. See. We as Gentiles specifically, we don't need signs and wonders. Today, there are no signs and wonders. Okay? The Jews require a sign. Okay? The Jews today are saved by the gospel of Paul today in this dispensation. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, it's going to be a familiar one where it's faith and works. See, that's why we were brought into their tree to make them jealous. You understand, right? Good. I hope so. Um, I know we kind of drifted off a little. Um, into uh, another part of it, but it, it was necessary to do that to show this. Um, so when our Lord says that John the Baptist was Elias, and when John himself said, I'm not, the Lord is referring to that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elias, for he was not Elias, Elijah himself, because Elijah is going to be returning as one of the two witnesses, as shown in the book of Revelation, chapter 11. Okay? So, um, hopefully this answers that question for you, uh, for you, brother, specifically, and for those of you who you might inquire of this, uh, I hope this answers it. Um, thank you very much for watching. I'm going to chill now for a little bit and then I got another video to do um, answering another brother's question okay so thank you very much for watching if you do I love you see you in the next video